Are you trying to look hot? <laughs> what? <laughs> Huh? Uh, 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 how do you begin <laughs> uh, answering this? Being completely honest, at least 10% was that way like most of the time. But like the other 90% of it was just trying to, to fix myself. I think I'm trying to look decent. <laughs> Not hot per se, maybe just presentable. I was overweight and I could only fit into guy clothing at the time. I mean, the girls in my class, they were so much slimmer than I was. They could fit into all these nice clothes and I couldn't. So I didn't think I looked presentable and I couldn't fit in with all of them just because I, I was too fat. No, not hot, but like, uh, I think it's just to look um, like pretty on stage on film. I do have like a lot of friends and classmates who do look good on stage. So I feel like I want to look up to their standards. So I remember when I was 12, like I went shopping with my mom. We were trying to find I think jeans or something and like nothing fit. Um, and the salesperson like she looked me up and down and she was just like I think she just go somewhere else like nothing's gonna fit you here. And I was like okay. And then it started, yeah. Like it just like went downhill from there. That was the trigger point. When I was like maybe 14 years old, I had I, like, I went to a friend's birthday party and then we were all like wearing bikinis, blah, blah, blah. And then uh, we took a lot of photos. Then we posted photos on Facebook. And then um, my friend told me that this guy saw my photos and then he said something about my body. I suddenly felt conscious that like, oh, people actually care. People actually give a shit. The main one I remember is uh, this family friend. And then he was like, have you eaten? And I was like, yeah, I have. And he's like, yeah, well, it's pretty obvious you've eaten. And then I was just from then, like something just clicked. Like, oh, people see me like this. People see me as the fat kid. So I have to do something about it. It's all through from people's comments. Like, oh, Hey, how come suddenly you look you look a bit chubbier, you look a bit did you eat a lot, you look fatter and stuff, that kind of thing from parents and relatives especially. I guess with those words kinda took a toll. It kinda like affected me a little bit. Like, shit, did I gain weight? And yeah, so that's when I realized, hey, why don't I try purging? So the first time I purged, I used a toothbrush because I actually didn't know how to do it. So I realized that if I just kept gagging and it would come out. Looking attractive was definitely part of the reason. But after a while, it transforms into something else. It's way beyond the desire to look attractive. It is an obsession, addiction. Like it's an obsession with control. Did you lose weight? Yeah, definitely. I lost a significant amount of weight. Within a span of, I think, two months, I lost close to 20 kilos. So maybe in the morning, I'd have like a slice of bread. That was it. And then maybe for lunch, I'd have like Milo. And then for dinner, then I would have Milo again. Then that was it. <laughs> I lived like that for, I think, close to three years of my life. Looking back, I really don't know how I did it, but yeah, I did. I actually lost about seven, six to seven kg over like five months. It was about 51, 52. And that's really underweight for my height. But for me, is like, I don't care about underweight. I just care about the numbers on the weighing scale. If I don't look a certain way that I want to look like, I would take uh, even further extent to do so. Like I would go to the gym, do like like excessive exercise, like do really intense workout and just not eat as much after that. So I would do anything just to reach that limit as fast as I can. I think I was about 60, 69, 68. Um, for my height, I'm like 175 cm. I feel like I always have to explain myself, you know? Like, oh, I'm tall, you know? I hate that, but anyway. My lowest was 52 kg. 
yeah, 50, 50-ish. This was when I was restricting my diet and I was like running a lot. Uh, what did I do? Don't eat. Ah. The less I eat in a day, the more shook. Like, go on Tumblr la. It's so screwed up. Yeah, but they'll tell you, okay, day one, eat how many calories. Day two, eat how many calories. I'll just follow it. Ah. Yeah, but it came to a point where I didn't even need to follow it. It's just don't eat. Ah. Yeah. Don't eat and then exercise. It was very simple to live, you know? This is my goal. These are the steps to get there, to my goal. And it was working. And it felt so good. Mm. Even though the goal made no sense. Mm. From the period of like 12 to 13, like I lost like 10, 15 kg. And like at that point of time, I was like really quite small already. Like those feelings of like, I still need to fix myself, like something's wrong, it just didn't go away. And that's when it transitioned into bulimia because like I was so ang like I, I felt so like disgusted with myself. I knew for a fact like this level of like self-disgust wasn't normal, but I didn't know what to do about it. So I started like purging, I started like throwing up. It's just a lot of self-hatred. Yeah. Yeah. If you looked at me back then, you would have thought that, yeah, okay, she looks perfectly fine, perfectly normal uh, size. But I still didn't think I was, so I couldn't physically bring myself to a store and try on clothes because I knew that I, if I tried on clothes and if it wasn't an S or it wasn't an XS, I wouldn't feel good about myself. So my mom will always tell me, you know, I look so good. Like, I'm beautiful. I mean, I'm her daughter, you know? Like, I will always be the most beautiful girl in her eyes. Like, but to me, it's just empty words. Because uh. at that point, it wasn't even about how I looked anymore. Like, it was about control. It was like finding a identity. Is that okay? Who? Were you proud of yourself? I feel like that's a very dangerous question yeah. to answer. But um, in a nutshell, yes. Yeah, I was very proud that I was doing something to fix what was wrong with me. I don't know why I found pride in suffering. Like, you know, it's like I'm purging, I'm not eating, like I'm hungry, I lost my period, like my body's changing, I'm growing random hair. You know, like when you get very bad anorexia, you start growing hair in random places because your body's trying to keep it warm or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. And like, I was like, yes, like look at me. Like, I was just like so empowered that people were noticing something was wrong with me. It was a sign of like victory, yeah. You're just like, yes, something is wrong with me. I was very proud of myself for losing all the weight. I felt like it was an accomplishment. Everyone was like complimenting me, asking me for tips on how to lose weight. Yeah, nobody thought it was a problem at the time. I didn't think it was a mental condition at the time. I thought I was picking up strategies from this disorder to make it work for me. Everything felt like in control in my life. Then yes, I was proud of myself. But when, when everything went south, like, when I became bulimic, that is what, that was suffering to me because I was completely out of control. Like, just, it was so bad. And I was not proud of myself. I was disgusted. I finally acknowledged, okay, this is a problem. In the past, yes, I knew this is a problem, but it's like, it's a problem that makes me feel good, you know? But this is like a problem that was, hindering my existence. Couldn't do anything but binge and purge and think about food. I had the mindset of not telling anybody at all. Thinking back about it, I just think to myself like, how? Like, how can I reach that extent where even when I'm out with my friends, I can take the opportunity to go to the toilet and purge like successfully without them like completely like realizing about it. I just wanted to go through this by myself because I feel like if I told them, they would tell me the same thing like, you know, this is unhealthy for you, you know, you should you should really stop. Every time when people when my friends talk about anorexia, I would just say like, oh why would people want to vomit out their food? Like why do people have anorexia or eating disorder? You know, in a way it's like for me to hide like disguise myself, you know, and so that people don't suspect that I have it. It's very hard to like make real 
long lasting connections okay. because like there's this big part of your life that you're just not telling anyone and when they ask you oh how are you feeling like how are you doing and you're just like I'm fine and like by just lying like that like you cut off like 90% of like potential friendships yeah, yeah. for eating disorders I feel like the reason's always very shameful yeah. or like we feel very ashamed of it yeah. yeah it's like one day when I get to the place that I feel comfortable in then I will show the world who I am but it was always, it never got there lah. I don't think you'll ever get there. Like if the reasons are yeah. not healthy, you're never going to get to a healthy space. Yeah. yeah. What made you decide to seek help? <laughs> what happened was, I started passing out all over the place. <laughs> once I passed out in church, and then once I think I passed out at the airport, and then once I passed out at the supermarket, so at this point, my parents have had enough with me. I think my parents at the time, they didn't really know how to handle the situation. And it's not because they didn't want to. It's because they just, it's very foreign to them, right? The concept of an eating disorder. So to them, it was just, you eat lah. Like, you know, eat and everything will be okay. I got caught by my current boyfriend. He actually kind of sort of like realized it because every time when I come out from the toilet I would have watery eyes so I told him everything on the spot because I feel like there's no point hiding anymore eventually I'm going to run out of excuses I can't be giving the same excuses every time he was just there like comforting me and like just trying to get through this with me together I didn't really go through go through like therapy or anything like that but uh, I guess I got tired of purging and tired of feeling pain and like soreness in the throat. I'm afraid that this will affect the relationship. You know, like maybe we'll fight more or something. I guess uh, with him being more strict, it's kind of like a good thing for me so that I will get my mind straight. Like, this is serious and I have to do this. What made me decide to seek help was that I knew I, I, I was going to shut down soon. I wasn't able to put up this facade for any longer. I wasn't able to go to school and do well anymore. I told my mama, so I told her that I really, I think I cannot anymore. So she contacted psychologists, uh, psychiatrists, everything. So I, I went to see a psychiatrist. I'm so thankful because she is always there to make everything better. When I was 18, um, like the insides of my throat and like my esophagus got burned so badly, right? Like I went to the doctor and he was like, you need to stop or you need to go for surgery. Like in my mind, right, I was like, okay, I need to stop purging because my parents were worried. Like I didn't want them to worry. I didn't want to go for the op. And then like, it transitioned into like a panic, like attack disorder. So I was having panic attacks all the time. <laughs> yeah, it was, during the season where I was like seeing the counsellor for like my panic attacks and like trying to like not get back to bulimia when it turned out like I'm a I'm a I'm a <laughs> like I'm a survivor of sexual abuse when I was um younger mm. and I think I think knowing what I went through before explained a lot of things for me. It explains a lot of like the self-disgust and like the shame and like the image issues and like the panic and the fear. Yeah. The main reason why I tried to kind of fight my eating disorder or all my mental, like my battles in my head is because I have a daughter now. So she's 10 months. And I mean, I can't be the best mom to her if I myself am struggling. So I try my best to stay physically and mentally healthy. I want to be a good example to her lah in the future. I want her to grow up happy and healthy and confident. I used to idolize like supermodels and used to um, glorify eating disorders. It used to be my screensavers. Now she's my main inspiration. <laughs> I think recovery is never a straight line. There's no end point to it. Um, you can't say that you have fully recovered. Um, because there will be days where you slip a bit, you fall, and that's okay. It doesn't mean you've failed your recovery. I try to avoid triggers by telling myself that mm, no matter what other people say, it's, 
it's just their opinion. Just don't think about it. I haven't encountered that moment yet that I have to lose weight for a role. If I do encounter that, I'm scared that I will get I'll go through this eating disorder again. I feel like I've come to a point where I can I'm learning how to love my body. Like if I got like double chin or like you know like my arms are flabby, like it's still me, like I'll still love myself. After I dropped out of JC, I went to a poly. I, I picked up a sport lah. That's touch, touch rugby. So having a sport to work towards, right, really pushed me in my recovery because it changed my mindset about beauty. Instead of working towards being smaller, it worked towards being stronger, being faster, being fitter. It was about shifting my goals into something that was healthy for me, for my body. I have a wing scale, right, but I actively don't weigh myself because I don't want that to be a def definition of what I am, you know. What's your perspective of beauty? Like now? A bit of, you know, fat here and there, cellulite here and there, it's not so bad. I think ultimately, if you feel good inside and you like what you're doing with yourself, then you are beautiful. Wow, it's gonna sound so lame and cliche, but like, um, to me, if you are a beautiful person, it's not how they look. It's how you feel when you're around them. It's like the aura that they radiate, the energy that they put out. They just start to look beautiful also. It's really internal, inside out, rather than outside in, yeah. I feel like I see like the beauty in a lot of different people in different ways. It's like I'll notice like small things about someone that they may not even like about themselves. So for example, like some girls have very small eyes and like, I think that is very beautiful. I like to make it a point to tell people that I like something about them. Yeah. Like whether it be their smile or like like you have very cute like ears or some, something like that. Like, as long as it doesn't sound strange, like I will try and point it out. Like tell them like like you know, positivity. You go yeah. girl. You go girl. <laughs> yeah. What would you like to say to people who struggle with eating disorder? Um, wow, okay. There was actually this one woman who DM'd me, I think a few months ago, and she was asking me for help and like how to get through her eating disorder. She's a mom of three or four kids, and she said that, you know, it's making it very difficult for her to kind of be a mom because she she's so focused on her eating disorder that she can't do anything else beyond that. And it makes me so sad because she was so ashamed to have an eating disorder at this age. She's like, I am I feel like I'm too old for this, you know, I should be smarter than this. That's what a lot of people don't understand. An eating disorder does not choose anyone of a certain um, gender, of a certain age. It can happen to men, it can happen to women who are older than 50. Like It's not about whether you're smart or you're stupid, you're rich or you're poor, it's a mental condition. So it can literally affect anyone. If you are suffering with an eating disorder, I would say try to go to someone who you trust. Talk through this out with them and if you need their help, to control you uh, from purging or constantly eating, then let them help you. And just keep reminding yourself, reminding yourself that uh, you can get through this and it will end someday. Don't know when, but you can get through this. Yeah. I think because we have been taught to downplay it. Oh, yeah. it's just anorexia, just yeah. give her a burger. Eat yeah. a burger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. why a lot of people don't acknowledge it and that's why it's hard to treat. I feel like me, my eating disorder in the past perhaps was me trying to find a grounding in life, trying to find an identity. Like if I couldn't be anything else, at least I could be a skinny person. So even though I'm still figuring out who I am as a person, I try to focus on what I am rather than what I'm not. And what I want to be, what I don't want to be. Focus on the things that I can work on rather than things that are completely out of my control. Yeah. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed this episode. Eating disorders aren't always associated with anorexia. You don't have to be severely underweight to be diagnosed with one. The symptoms can be invisible too. Overcoming an eating disorder requires a lot of willpower and courage. And if you're struggling with an eating disorder now, we hope this episode can encourage you to seek help. You're not alone in this. 
So if you enjoy watching our series, our Can Ask Me series, you can click more on this playlist to watch more. And also you can click on the notification bell to get more updates.